The government is finally about to start wider consultation on the controversial He Puapua report. So you remember the report was written so that Aotearoa New Zealand can meet its obligations to Indigenous New Zealanders in the eyes of the UN. Its authors call it a roadmap to fair power sharing between Māori and Pākehā. The Act Party says it heralds the end of Liberal democracy and one person, one vote. So, what does Te Pāti Māori say to that? Tauti mai, welcome to the programme co-leader. Debbie Ngārewa Pekka, tēnā koe, morena. Is the Act Party tēnā, right? Tēnā. Does governance mean the end to universal suffrage, one person, one vote? No, no, they're not right um, on many things, but particularly this one they've got um, tragically wrong. And I guess, um, you know, it's really unclear from, you know, their debate on which part of what's been proposed is um, not going to work for them and which part of what's been proposed. Um, this is a party that complains about spending millions of dollars in inequities and addressing Māori inequities. Uh, you know, if we keep doing what we're doing, we're going to keep getting what we get. So this is a better um, future-focused way of investing in inequities. All right, so what does co-governance look like to Te Pāti Māori? Well, I think, um, you know, and I, I've got to say, from Te Pāti Māori's perspective, we were always uh, tautoko, uh, the document of Te Tiriti, which is about uh, Tenoranga Teratanga and Mana Motuhake, which is, you know, very much about self-determination, hewa noa, in the um, best interests of Aotearoa and uh, Tiriti-centric Aotearoa, it is about uh, sharing uh, strengths. Sorry, plane going over me at the moment. It is about sharing strengths. It is about, uh, and we do it already. And the latest example is to look at the COVID response, mm. the way that we see isolation and total going out for Fano. It is about sharing the best of our strengths together. And, and, and I think that's what's frightening. Um, people like those that support ACT because there's a basis of power sharing. There's a basis of bringing in strengths from other cultures, which I guess is, is um, intimidating for those who have had commercial gain from one, one culture mm. and one cultured approach. Debbie, your mana motuhake policy sets out to divorce the Crown. Does that mean you want to get rid of the treaty? No, no, not at all. And in fact, what it is is about enacting that without um, barriers. And again, you know, from Tangata Whenua's perspective, everyone that has arrived here um, are Tangata Tariti. And we see that, you know, look at it, we see our real classes, uh, um, you know, you can't get in because we have Tangata Tariti doing that. We see the relationships in our kura and our kohanga where we have Tangata Tariti involved. We see the engagement of kaitiaki with our environment. With, divorcing you know, the crown, doesn't that Maori throw together. out... Divorcing the crown, doesn't that throw out the notion of partnership and co-governance? No, what it does is it actually throws out the fact that we have to sit there and continue and not evolve, um, and continue in the way that things have been and not evolve to what it needs to be. And I think that's the important thing, is that our tūpuna had vision that this was something that was going to evolve as we evolved in an enduring partnership. And I think, you know, the Crown has had 180 years, and again, it comes down to that cordial. What part of what's gone on in the last 180 years do people not want to change or, I guess, effectively want to keep? So this is about being future-focused and how it is that we evolve in a partnership, again, without the hang-ups of having to justify every legislation that advances us, with having to justify teaching our history. So those, you know, again, this was a very visionary kopapa, mm. and and our tupuna saw um, the opportunity for us to continue to advance, not Debbie, stay where one the dominant culture clouded the other. I want to bring in the He Pua Pua mm. report. It recommended a Māori parliament, which the Party Māori is pushing under its mana motuhake policy. But how will that work? How does a Māori parliament work? I think it's also um, proposed and, and discussed in Mātiki Mai, and I guess the kōrero is about... Um, and, yeah, there's been amazing visionaries like um, Ta Mason um, Jury has talked about the fact that we have a kaupapa where all that is kaupapa Māori, like the Māori Health Authority, comes under a atamira that belongs in the interests of Māori. So we don't have to keep having this um, synergy of, you know, oh, it's segregated, it's separatist. It's actually about 
putting the strengths where the strengths are best met. So I guess in a, um, a practical sense, it is about sort of saying, right, OK, we do it now. We do the fact that we look after our own cultural well-being. We look after ourselves and have kōrero in mātauranga Māori and kaupapa Māori. So, you know, again, it's about advancing and evolving to the next stage of what we need to look like as Aotearoa. All right. And All how right. that goes, whether the framework is like now or it's something different, is what needs to be imagined and discussed further from Mataki Mai. Right. You want to drop the retirement age uh, to seven, uh, 57 for Māori. Shouldn't we be focusing more on finding solutions so that Māori live longer? Oh, absolutely. It is an end to end. But the reality is we've had 180 years of waiting for and trying to find um, whichever it's blue or red on either side that are focused on the solutions. We also have to put something in place now. And I think this is what we're proposing, and it's not new. Um, we have to put something in place now to address the fact that we are pōhara, that we are dealing with some real challenges, and stop pretending that um, it's not that different. The differences are too vast to wait, and they need to be dealt with immediately. Te Pāti Māori is polling at the moment at 2% and could be king or queen maker at the next election. You say it depends on who is more te tiriti centric So which party is that right now? I think, um, you know, first of all, in respect to polls, you know, one blooming pohuta kawa tree doesn't make for a great summer. Um, so we'll stay really grounded and humble about what polls are saying or not saying. Um, for us, it's been really clear. Those that are prepared to focus on a future Aotearoa-centric, um, Aotearoa Tiriti-centric um, nation, and I think that's where we need to be, and we need to be very, very clear on that. Our people will determine if we are... Um, fortunate to, to be in that position, but at the end of the day, it has to be those who are truly focused on dealing with the issues that are holding us back from our true potential. We're really clear on okay, that. Okay, and who is that? Well, I, I don't know where it is and what they're doing because you look at some of the, the cordial that comes from some of these parties and it changes randomly by the week, you know. So I think, uh, again, the discussion and the focus for Te Party Māori has to be on ourselves and our people and who we serve. And that's how we'll continue. And again, it's you know it's good to see polls saying this, but like I said, one blooming pohutakawa tree doesn't make it for a great summer. Is Te Pāti Māori going to stand a candidate in the Tauranga by-election? Um, I think there's been discussions at the moment, and that's very much for um, our whanau in, in um, Tauranga and Waiariki uh, uh, Takewa to discuss and... Um, at this stage, I think that's still under under discussion with the whānau. Most recently, we lost uh, the great Dr Moana Jackson, and he left a huge legacy, mm. Debbie, and revived a tradition by his iwi mm. during his tangi Ngāti Kahungunu, of course, allowing women to speak on the marae. Should it, you know, should all iwi follow suit? Oh, gosh. I mean, you know and I know that at the end of the day, it's not for me um, as a co-leader for Te Pāti Māori to tell other iwi how to enact their tikanga. Um, that is for uh, each iwi, each hapu to determine each marae for themselves. There was good kōrero, and I think the um, challenges of modern life, and again, are no different to our kōrero about a um, tiriti-centric Aotearoa and how that kōrero evolves comes very much from within the... Uh, I think I think what was really awesome is that um, the relationship of wahine and, um, and tāne is strong and secure enough to be able to have those kōrero. And what I saw at Mata Iwi was there was lots of tautoko um, for our, our wahine to get up into kōrero and to um, honour the respects of not only the marae but also what, um, you know, um, what Moana wanted as well. Final question, Debbie. You're calling for Dr Ashley Bloomfield's role uh, to be replaced by the heads of both the Māori Health Authority and Health NZ. Mm. Why? Mm. Well, again, it's the same um, kōrero. Like, you know, Dr Bloomfield's done a huge mahi, huge mahi. But when it came to Māori kaupapa, there were failings. Um, there were failings when we couldn't get data. There were failings when we were trying to get experts um, from, for example, Te Rōpū uh, Waka Kaupapa Uruta to advise. We need to not be in those positions. And again, this is about putting in the spirit of Te Tiriti. We have our experts, uh, we've seen. Māori have held up the front line and they got Aotearoa through this. So we need to be able to you know, support that in the way and going forward with... Um, 
you know, with this position. It's a huge opportunity and one that should be taken seriously. E mihi ana kia koe te rangatira, Debbie Ngārewa Packer, the co-leader for the Party Māori.